Hello, folks. I think it's working now. Um, we have had a serious amount of technical difficulties. OBS has been um, very interesting, <laughs> but we are we are through the looking glass now and uh, now streaming, I believe. Um, so, if that is the case, and I pray to every deity there has ever been that you can hear me. Um, this is the Duskfall Circulation War, uh, episode four, and uh, I am Ben Sherry. I'm a Maltese Australian game designer and um, other things that I'll be able to announce soon, um, but I still don't actually know if I can announce them. So for now, just game designer. <laughs> um, uh, my pronouns are he, him. Um, you can see my tag stuff there. I don't know. Um, uh, I'm a little bit frazzled, uh, as you can probably <laughs> tell. Um, so whilst I comport myself, uh, let's let's take it away, everyone. Uh, Alex. We'll start with me. Yeah. So, hey, I'm Alex. You can find me on most things, either as Sylvia or Soul Jam. One day I'll compile the two, but... <laughs> until now um i've just started streaming again we fixed my pc um i'll be streaming a whole bunch of stuff i'll be streaming like stardew and subnautica Terraria, a whole bunch of competitive pro overwatch so if that kind of interests you you can give that a check check that out on the it should be on the chat i posted but jjam is my twitch name um and i've also started taking commissions for emotes so that'll be exciting um and apart from that i do hobby game design as well and i study it so that's me beautiful <laughs> I think you're up next, Brandon. Hi, everybody. I'm Brandon. Um, my pronouns are he, him, or they, them. I'm a poet, speculative fiction writer, a game designer, some other things that would escape me right now. Um, and you can find me almost everywhere at The Rising Tides. Thank you. Um, and next we have Lavender. Hi, I'm Lavender. I go by they, them. You can find me on the internet at Dark Lavender Void. And uh, you should catch my game now that since we've been uh, away for so long. Yeah. I would have announced things, but they've already happened. <laughs> um, uh, things that are still happening. Um, so many things have changed. My game is out, for one thing. It's gone from, like, three years of alpha to now we're finally getting into beta where I just have to, like, fix small details that are awful rather than big glaring details that are not hitting where I want them to. Um, and also, I am doing a playtest of that game um, on actual play. Uh, which is Sean Nittner's and Strash Achimovich's um, Twitch channel, where they do like some Blades-related stuff, a lot of indie games, um, and my game. Apparently, it's we're having a really good time over there. Uh, we ended the universe at episode three. So oh, you had, we're yeah. having to start anew <laughs> for the next five episodes, probably, of that series, unless we decide to go longer. Beautiful. That's very good. That's me. Beautiful. And uh, lastly, we have Melody. Hello, I'm Melody. I am a historian, games designer, um, uh, editor now, um, apparently, uh, model general internet heckler and assorted other things. Um, I'm Magic Space Girl on Twitter. Actually, her pronouns. Beautiful. That's Thank you very much. OK, so um, as as we uh, we all want to do on this show, um, we will start off with a recap going through um, crew xp as well but because it's been so long i think we should do a a little bit of a um a reintroduction of of characters um so if uh 
what, as we step through, we'll get. I'll, I'll just get all of you to um, say your character's name and um, and your playbook and just like a little snippet about who you are. Uh, so I guess I'll pop <clears throat> this over to the table view and then we can look at the the crew sheet here um, for XP. Who wants to handle XP uh, like the actual clicking? today on it yep excellent okay um so uh i guess lavender do you want to um start off introduce your character and um and then we can we can go through uh some of the, uh, the like the first xp trigger mm -hmm. i am playing stavro maha and i am an academic um i know a lot about the um, the academic <laughs> side of communism, and I can make like <laughs> those types of arguments, um, but usually only in writing. Like I can't quite put it together in words most of the time, and sometimes I, in order to like just get along in social situations, I adopt other personas. <laughs> And it sometimes always works I great. have, yep. And sometimes I have trouble switching between personas at the correct times, which is why I have the haunted trauma. Yeah, <laughs> I failed every roll. It's great. I love it. Uh, okay, so do you want to go through the first XP trigger, and then we can we can talk about that. Absolutely. Um, did we acquire product supply, execute clandestine or covert sales, or did we secure new territory last time? Uh, did we do a mission last time? I feel like we just mostly did downtime stuff. Yeah, we did, yeah. yeah, we just went through yeah. downtime. Um, mm -hmm. um, I, so what is the trigger again, sir? Um, acquiring product supply, executing clandestine or covert sales, or securing new territory. Yeah. So, no. yeah, I don't remember any of that happening. Um, I think we mostly fucked up our vice roles. Yeah. <laughs> that's right, yeah. yeah that's or succeeded right. terribly in the case of, uh, <laughs> of Stumble. Yeah. <laughs> That's I, right. I, I actually fucked up K too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, and we had we had uh, one of our players got lost for a little one of our characters. Yeah. Well, right. we'll we'll, we'll get to that. that. Yeah, we'll get to yeah. that. Um, so th that's right because everyone last session everyone uh, indulged their vices and uh, overindulged. Um, some folks are like kind of on purpose because it was mechanically impossible for them not to, um, but everyone did indulge uh like overindulge so we got a lot of problems <laughs> that turned up but they were good they were good problems mm -hmm. um, we used i remember we used some things you get from overindulging to like make other things from overindulging not as bad yeah because yeah we got so much heat that we ticked over so now Into like the yeah. extra entanglements we were rolling were not as bad Wait, did we tick over into wanted? Because I've only yeah. got yeah, we did. That, We've got one. I don't think that has updated on the sheet. Yeah, we definitely have one. We ticked over. Uh, yep. Okay. Thank yeah. you for yeah. bragging. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I remember <laughs> now. Um, uh, so, is it one and one or? I feel like it's one and one. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, so, in that case. Um, I reckon, yeah. Okay, Brandon, you you <laughs> introduce uh, your character and your new character for the moment, um, and and we can go through the next XP trigger. <clears throat> introduce my character, you say. Um, hi, I'm Seneca, or at least I was Seneca a couple of nights ago, um, until. I discovered uh, this like random obsession with being um, possessed by a ghost that seems really, really familiar to me. 
and then I went to have sex with my girlfriend, and I became possessed. So you're not speaking to Seneca, you're speaking to Nyrex now, um, who is just here to make sure that Seneca's body does not get hurt randomly by weird shit that Kane might end up doing. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, I I didn't really think about it like that, but I I guess um, I guess it is legitimate that um, you now have a sexually transmitted ghost. So <laughs> that's that's the way. Isn't that what happens to Pac-Man Fox? <laughs> <laughs> You know, I'm just gonna move on. Actually, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna move on. Um, so, so Brandon, could you please read the next uh, XP trigger? <clears throat> um, mark what XP if you contend with challenges above your current station. Okay. Do you folks think that occurred? Are we? Can we be? Can we ourselves be a challenge greater than our current station? Yeah, like I am willing. I am willing to vouch for a member of the crew learning that one of their teammates is possessed. Uh, mm. I think that's. I think that's a challenge above one station. Yeah, um, and yeah, and it's going to be one hell of a challenge to get you out of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like the one. rest of the crew doesn't even know what the fuck is happening. Yeah. Yeah, because that's right. Because like, I'm I'm basically under threat to keep it silent for now. Yeah. There's also kind of play yeah. along. I, I I also think like just generally the things that Kane got up to. Um, uh like I mean we there was that weird. So when when Kane overindulged, um, they were cut off from their electroplasm supply, um, and uh, that that cutting off was uh, by the manifestation of this sort of weird drowned sailor ghost, um, like diver ghost with the the diving helmet and everything, that yeah. like stole all of Kane's um electroplasm and, and freak me the fuck oh and freaked you and <laughs> and branded your neck right you you've yeah, now got a, a big cool thing around yeah my yeah um so i mean we don't know much about that ghost yet but i i think that that might <laughs> entail um above your current station i think, I think yeah kane kind of misunderstood that situation and yeah. basically contended with something it really it really shouldn't have done so, so I think, everyone I think, misunderstood that situation yeah so i, <laughs> I think know there's I, like, <laughs> I think there's like one or two on that mm. that trigger mm. if you folks agree yeah I think, I think one. Yep. messing with messing with the bar thing and then also messing with the possessed ghost could potentially be two but i'm happy to take one what, what does everyone think I mean, more XP is good. <laughs> yep. I don't know. Yeah. Necessarily, they were like, like together, I feel like they were a great challenge, but I don't think them individually were massive challenges. So maybe one? I think also with Nyrix and everything, um, I yeah, I, I think that this is worth two uh, overall. Okay. Um, there's also, I mean, you haven't yet contended with the demon, uh, Red Weather, that has showed up, and we, oh, we no. will show, like, we will deal with that, because <laughs> right at the end there was a demon, um, uh, but um, we can we can head on for now, and I'm guessing we're going to hit that again for, for next session, um, mm -hmm. but um, who, who do we have? I guess, yeah, um, Kane, would you like to um introduce yourself uh and uh and then go through the next xp trigger okay so um kane is like a haunted young man not in the sense of a bias like a trauma haunted <laughs> just just haunted, haunted. Uh, <laughs> so they're basically someone that's kind of like new to the keeners they're kind of like the rookie basically being overshadowed by family so they have quite a lot of self-esteem issues relating to like their work and the supernatural work um especially when it comes to ghost related controlling things which we have seen quite a bit of <laughs> and mm. see it backfire quite a lot um and they're basically here to prove themselves but they're not very good at doing that they don't have super great charisma um they're tall and intimidating if they weren't actually super intimidating but they're not <laughs> um 
and yeah it'll be fun to see them kind of grow and take on the challenge that is nyrex right now so nyrex mm. is uh two of them have some bad blood uh, <laughs> and considering they're in a friend right now being possessed and the fact that kane has to kind of mm. keep it under wraps because doesn't want things to get fucked up mm. is in of itself an interesting concept so we'll see how that goes beautiful okay so uh the next trigger uh where am i reading from that again uh this is from the keener's um crew cool. sheet cool look at that up um so the next trigger uh, bolster your crew's reputation or develop a new one so Just bragging about what we did <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah well i think it does what is our reputation subversive, subversive. Yeah. yeah fair enough yep uh, i'd say one xp for that because we made we like got people's attention um stavril and sabine did yeah. when we were like um cool especially because St stavril's like I am a priest or something, and I fucked yeah, up. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. And, and Sabine had to be like, please stop having a panic attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Please. But, um, oh, we don't want it from that, right? So it's like, we yeah. really did make our reputation not do that. Yeah, I, I think that that... One. Yeah, I think that you yeah. definitely get one for that. Um, yeah. Especially because uh, several did go into the middle of um the what was it called uh resonance um oh yeah uh, the yeah. the echo club and and whilst dancing and, and losing themselves to the music uh -huh. um then decided that they were a priest and um and proselytized the evils of echo so you know like that's that if not subversive, it's definitely weird. Like that's that's an mm -hmm. odd thing to do. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm all about it. Um, now, uh, I guess last we have is Sabine. Um, yeah. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure thing. Uh, so Sabine is um, a Scovlander uh, who was a veteran of the or is a veteran of the. Um, uh, sorry, what was the war, name of the war? The Unity War. The Unity War. Um, and was basically like a guerrilla kind of resistor um, all throughout that. Um, and now is here and is kind of, you know, anti the, the Dospol government and possibly has some kind of um, thus far unspecified connection to the Scovland, em Scovland Embassy. Yeah, the, the consulate. Yeah, we haven't consulate, seen that yet. Yeah. Um, yeah, and is like, I think, um, yeah, has known the group for a while and is like also enjoys writing um, from time to time. Uh, yeah, and it's kind of feels like a bit of outsi an outsider in the group um, and tries to play at the whole lone wolf thing, um, uh, but isn't necessarily, that's not necessarily what she's best at. Mm. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you wanna do you wanna go through the the final XP trigger? Oh yeah. Forgot there was another one. The keeners. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Um, okay. Express the goals, drives, inner conflict, or essential nature of the crew. Um, I want to say like yes for inner conflict and drives maybe maybe not so for goals because we didn't really do anything yeah. towards our like actual objectives but like we absolutely you know the inner conflict thing especially between Seneca and um Kane was yeah. like very good um but also like the, there was a lot of the stuff about like who our characters are and why they're you know together and how they do work together despite their differences and that kind of stuff because, like, yeah, quick recap through. We mm -hmm. had Sabine and uh, Stavril go to the club together where yeah. they both um, started bragging or otherwise shouting about what they did. Um, and that's where you started getting uh, pursued by um, uh, Redweather, the, the uh. spectral thing that mm -hmm. has uh, come to meet you. Um, then we saw Kane in the bathtub, uh, trying to commune and control the tiny little, like, scrap echoes of, um, of spirits left in the spirit vials, um, and 
made manifest that diver ghost who who destroyed everything um then we saw um then we saw Seneca um having sex with Nyrex and then getting possessed by Nyrex um and then we had that little fight between <laughs> between Kane and and Seneca when they they uh met again and, and Nyrex like asserted um Asserted dominance. Yeah, asserted dominance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, oh, we're going in that <laughs> direction. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, I mean, we could. Yeah, go, go back and watch the clips. <laughs> uh, they were good clips. Um, uh, and then, like, the other two party members listened at the door, and then uh, there was that, the best quote, which was the final, like, final line from Sabine, which was... Um, is everyone here <laughs> fucking but me? Um, and and then we we met Redweather. So in that we've got two characters like actually literally expressing their drives and, and their goals by yelling about how they sold communist shit. Uh, and then we saw um, every single character get in trouble because of their own. Um, their own personal inner demons um whether literal or not uh and then we saw two arguments break out among the the party so yes <laughs> if yeah. if you could take three or four xp for this i would say do but uh but two <laughs> is the maximum um i don't know where lavender's soon. gone uh, but i will be they'll be back okay cool uh, I will I will bump up those those two. Um, uh, okay, so I think I think we will open it um, not immediately not immediately after um, not immediately after the end of of uh, last episode. I think um, it's been like at least a couple of minutes right like uh it's not it's not a, a pure follow-on um we have what is the let's let's get someone please describe for me the the inside of the lair again because I, I need to know where exactly uh red weather is like in this scene um so so who would like to describe the lair um i'm happy to do so yeah um so uh the lair is, um, is it above an old warehouse or like? It's like in the old warehouse. It's, it's yeah. The warehouse so, yeah. That was converted into like sort of. Yeah, warehouse. that used to be used for industry or like owned by rich people or something. Um, and we set up inside there thanks to our buddies, the Lost. That's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, we, and we've kind of got it like uh, kind of fortified. Like there's, we've got like, a system set up so that we can there's like a an overhanging bit of the interior that goes over the gate and the front door so that we could like drop things on people's heads if they're trying to break in That's all kinds right, of stuff yeah. like that and inside it's like we haven't been there for very long and also we're like i can't say we're poor journalists because we got kicked out of the journalists so we're just poor like wannabe journalists um so we don't have a lot of stuff and the stuff that we do have is very eclectic, you know, it's got that feeling of like, it feels kind of homely despite itself, but it's like, mm. you know, there's, there's what looks like someone's Nana's like lounge. And then, um, you know, some scraps of old magazines like tacked to the wall over there. Uh, and like quite, you know, stuff we've salvaged and claimed from yeah. wherever. Stuff that like, you know, kind of looks cool from a distance, but you get up close and you realize everything is tacked and worn and breaking in places and kind of all mismatched and doesn't really work mm. together. Yeah, because um, we all just brought our own stuff in and our own things in and that kind of stuff. Um, and also there's a big printing press right in the middle of the room, a very old, probably stinky and smoky and greasy one. Mm. Okay, cool. So so we we get a cold opening like there's no uh opening um title sequence uh and we see the camera pan like really slowly really close up on the floor of this um 
this warehouse like moving over um like spilt ink stains and and spilt whiskey stains and uh and it moves past the the big like um cast iron feet of the the printing press and uh it moves next to um and like along the the bottom crease of one of those like really ratty bean bags that we saw um uh what we saw Seneca be like thrown back on um not at the end of last session but the one before um and in this whole like scene we we can't hear anything except for the sound of um of like something metal clinking against the side of ceramic and like it's just going on and on and this this like whole panning lasts about 30 seconds um when it reaches uh a a really well polished um like brogue very nice um shoe like a very nice black shoe it reaches that shoe and then starts heading up uh the pant leg of of someone um these like very tight fitting um very straight like almost perfectly straight pinstripe pants um and it goes up their their leg and then goes past their knee which is bent to the point where they must be like sitting on this um chair that is far too short for them um and it it goes past their their knee and then we see where their hand um is is held over a a saucer a, a chipped saucer with a chipped teacup uh and they're they're holding this silver spoon in their hand and moving it through the tea and, and they've been stirring this tea now for like you know 45 seconds like it's stirred the tea is stirred right like there's no amount of tea that isn't equally the same as all other parts of the tea at this point right um maximum tea it's it, maximum tea <laughs> um and uh the camera like starts pulling back and we can see who who they are and they're um this this gentleman dressed in a very very fine pinstriped uh suit uh and we can barely see anything um underneath the the brim of their hat which casts their face into like far too much shadow for uh the lighting in the room um and they're sat on this this um normal sized chair but they are quite a, a a tall gentleman um and uh the rest of you are arrayed around the room um uh in in various states of well i mean t tell me tell me how you react to to this this gentleman who has has come into the room introduced themselves as red weather um and then uh presumably beforehand asked you for some tea and then sat down to drink said tea <laughs> um yeah I, I guess the the camera first pans to Let's see what Stavril's thinking. Um, uh, Lavender, you're, you're muted. Yep, cool. Beautiful. Not anymore. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so do I have clues that I am dealing with a demon yet, or...? Um, how just... much do you know about demons? I feel like... Hmm... Let me propose this. Training too. in an academy oh. to to sail out on the void sea where there are giant demons in the sea. I feel like I might know something about them, but maybe not these kinds. Yeah. Yeah. I was I was going to propose that in fact um Cain doesn't have any experience with demons. Um not these kinds. Um the demons of the sea are very different from we're gonna say the ones that are on land and how they act. And so, although I can feel a supernatural presence, I don't know what it is, and that's terrifying. Mm. So maybe you're kind of similar, where we understand that this, like, there is a oddly familiar supernatural presence about this this character, but we don't understand what they are. Mm. I like that. That's okay. good. It's yeah. like, there's, like the word that almost comes out of your mouth and you try to describe it is like primality more than anything um but otherwise i don't know how to like 
I couldn't like explain why I feel the way that I do without coming across as extremely superstitious. Mm. Okay. Um, so, so how are you like standing in, in this, mm. um, in this moment or sitting perhaps? Are you I, like greeting them? Or? My guess, I could be wrong, is that like this person, so this sitting down, right? Mm. Uh, I feel like we're all standing like a raider in front of them because like we're all like what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So so you're all like s- stood up, just kind of watching this figure. Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you guys are all stand up, I'm kind of a little bit further back. Um, I've definitely noticed something off, and like just after all my fucking supernatural scares that I've had mm. in you know the past what thirty minutes, I'm a little bit hesitant to get any closer to this individual. Do, um, hmm. do we have quarters here, or do we not have that for our lair? I can't. Uh, I don't it's think it's you it. have taken the quarters no. um, upgrade. We um, definitely passed out on the couch. Like, yeah, yeah. So, so you don't yeah. have quarters, but you can like stay here. But it's it's uncomfortable, like shabby living. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, I think there's like um, Sabine. Like, looks like she's about to say something or do something. Um, and then there's like a sound of, um, of like something like rattling in, in, uh, a cupboard in like one of the, the side rooms. And she like, kind of like snaps almost to attention, like looks at his demon, uh, turns around on a heel, walking past, uh, who's like looking the most not kind of confused and dazed right now. Mm, probably Nyrex. Yeah. Nerex, yeah, fair enough. I reckon um, is probably the most sure of themselves right now. Yeah, and like facing away from um, Redweather, like kind of palms a small blade to Nyrex, like just in case, and then like walks into the side room really quickly. Hmm, okay. Interesting. Well, I mean, Nyrex, how, how do you feel about their, like, do you know what this thing is in front of you, or... Um... Or is it so far removed? Because, I mean, we did, we talked last time about how um, ghosts and demons are sort of polar opposites of, um, like, polar opposites on a metaphysical level. Um, does that mean that Nyrix has some inkling on, on what this is? Um, yeah, I would say she does. Um... But I also, like, in particular, I feel like Nyrix is in this moment trying to look like she doesn't know because she suspects that Seneca wouldn't know. Oh, and I, right, okay. And I think... <laughs> I love that mind game. And I think that Kane sees through that very quickly. <laughs> but I also think that, like, one of the things that I'm trying to slip past everyone is that... I am, um, like, how do I put this delicately? I'm, I'm trying to get this demon's attention, if you know what I mean. Yeah, sure. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Also, we're playing a role-playing game in which Nyrix is LARPing as Seneca. Yeah. Right. Good. Excellent. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Damn it. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Beautiful. So, so um, Redweather, um, like, there's there's these sort of weird looks going on. Sabine um, moves past uh, Seneca and and slips him this knife uh, and then leaves the room. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. There's like a. I assume there's like various storerooms and things. Yeah. Yeah. And it's and when you start moving, like you can just see enough underneath the brim of um, of Redweather's hat that you can see them like stop and their eyes flick up to to look at you and then follow you out uh, as you you like move through the room and then uh, go into uh, go into a back room and. They turn their their spoon over and tap it twice on top of the um, the cup, uh, and then like very purposefully turn it forward and put it to the side on uh, on their cup. 
um, and then bring the cup just underneath their their face but you know don't, don't go to take a, a sip or anything mm. um, and they say um, and this is like the first thing that they've said since like coming in and saying you know um, uh, like you, you know asking you for a cup of tea and that sort of thing and it's like you know what the fuck do you want kind of thing um, and uh, Red Weather says I've most enjoyed reading about your escapades both from your mouths and from those of others stilted slighted it's quite interesting what you're trying to do here I've long thought that this city could use something new someone fresh <laughs> you must understand and they they reach into like inside their coat um and bring something out and and um it's like clasped in their hand for a moment and they they offer it forward and it's a, a huge like a very large gold coin um much too large for them to have like easily taken it out of their pocket like they did uh but they they hold it out for you and it, it uh fills most of their palm um and probably the only one of you who would like recognize this is stavril um the these are like the old um imperial like before before the the empire started like printing proper currency that you use now um, these were the, the large coins that they printed when the old, like, small silver coins became too numerous and the inflation rate, like, meant that they needed to have a stage up, like, a noble currency. Um, and, and this is where the word, like, a coin comes from. Like, this is, like, the, this is the coin of, the of the coins, coin. right? Coin. Yeah, um, so they, they hold it forward and, and they say, um, you must understand I do not want to buy you. I do not want to sway you. I do not want to change you. I want to invest. I want to be benefactor. Yes? I would like to see what you have in store for this city. It's very dear to... And it looks down at its chest. Very dear to me. I think Sabine's, like, now standing in the in the doorway again and, like, has a burlap sack over her shoulder and it's kind of, like, wriggling a bit. <laughs> um, and she's just standing there, like, just observing. But, yeah. Um... Hmm. Um, so I think, uh, no, it's a little first to ask them, why is this place there to you? They say that home is where the heart is. It's where you can hang your hat. My heart has been here for quite some time. I've hung my hat here many times. Doskvol is my home. So what you're saying is that you like what we're doing and you want to give us I, I mean, some kind of trinket for it, for it? I want to pay you so that you can do what you do best more. I think at this point, Kane says something and then clears their throat because it's really hard to hear. Like, they've pretty much mumbled it. And they clear their throat, you're like... <coughs> 
and they're, tr they're trying really hard. Um, they're trying their best. Yeah, getting um, better every day. Yeah, yeah. Really not good at this uh, social talking thing. Um, and they're just like, "What's the catch? Anyone? No. No catch. Only, I would love as your newest." and greatest fan to be appraised of your escapades before any other. I would like an advance on your publications. I'll pick them up myself just after they've been printed. I'll come by here and I will collect one issue. I can even tell you what I think about it, if that would help. But I do not want to change you. I mean, that's easy enough to do. And hey, we can, we can always do it with some more letters to the editor at this point. And so, so they like they sort of re-offer their their coin, um, and and they say, "Do you accept?" If is everyone kind of standing there, like kind of looking a bit quizzical? Cause yeah, we're all just kind of just like if, if people are uh, kind of just like shrugging, whatever. Sabine's gonna walk forward. I actually, yeah. <clears throat> um, so uh, Sabine gave me a knife. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, so I'm gonna walk up to uh, the demon with the knife. Like uh, the knife was hidden before, but like I'm drawing it out very slowly now. Okay. Um, and I walk up to them and very like lightly with the tip of the knife trace a circle around the coin in his hand. So. They're just staring at the coin, like you, you tracing the knife around, um, not flinching, mm. nothing like that, just staring down at it. Uh, and then they, they like look back up from it um, directly into your eyes. Uh. <laughs> um, and I lean in just a little bit. And I say, uh, softly, not that everybody else can hear, but very softly. How else do you plan to pay us? <laughs> um, is this not enough? I have more. Other trinkets. Just ask. I will provide. Sounds fair to me. But of course, with every re request, will come perhaps a little bit more. But we can discuss that at a later date. I do not want you saying yes to what you don't understand. That's far from what I want. Do you accept? We accept. And I feel like at this point, like, you're like, we accept. And we're all just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of us really have an answer, but you're just like, yeah. Yeah. Man, right, better, yeah, Sabine, like, Sabine, right. like, walks forward, and, like, puts a hand on Seneca's shoulder, maybe. It's like, um, and it's just, yeah, like, we accept. Yeah. So, so <laughs> Red Weather, like, s sort of, they're leaning forward like still the tea untouched like mm -hmm. leaning more and more forward with the uh the coin in hand mm -hmm. um waiting for someone to to like grab it so, I'll so take it. yeah sabine you you reach out and take this like huge awkward like massive <laughs> gold coin you know it's valuable because yeah. you're on to death with it oh yeah yeah um <laughs> and and as soon as it like leaves uh red hand um 
they they sort of like step back and and close their hand uh and look down at their tea and um and then like start to to push it away and like looking for somewhere to put the cup um and uh and says i've taken far too much of your time thank you for the tea it was delicious um to which Lyrix immediately responds, but you barely touched it. Was it not sweet enough? It was perfect. <laughs> Just the way I like it. Just the way... And you can see it, like, look off to the side, like, trying to, like, think of something to say. <laughs> Just the way Mother would make it. Thank you. I should be going now. I'm sure you have much to write. I look forward to your next escapade. And and they they like if there's nowhere like if no one goes to take the the saucer and there's like evidently nowhere to put it down because oh, right. you've got like oh. no furniture. They like stand up and then like what? set it on the f- sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so they do I, the same. I, you take it? Yeah, okay, so they're, they're nice. going to do the Sims thing, but, but like, Nyrex, <laughs> Seneca, you, you take the, the sauce, and, and they, they, like, awkwardly kind of, like, nod and, uh, and then, like, touch the brim of their hat and, um, and then without another word, turn around and, and stroll to the door uh, and, and leave. Uh, all right. <laughs> so add a add a coin to the crew uh, to the crew weird. coffer. Um, I'll be right back. Yeah, no mm. worries, no worries. Um, so now we need to discuss what your next score is going to be. Mm. Oh, so that's interesting, um, folks in in chat. Um, I'm I'm getting used to to zoom here um it seems that when um someone leaves like turns off um cam it it reorders uh do you know if that will fix up the order when when alex is back it will not but okay. what you do is you have um everyone who needs to shut off their cameras and then you tell us which order to bring the cameras back on it I can just um, fix them manually. Um, that's okay. that's easy enough. Um, uh, cool. Um, all right. Yeah. So, um, what do you want to do next? Good question. Um, hmm. We don't have enough stuff on um, Slain to do something with that yet, do we? No, you're you're one point away from uh, ticking up your your dirt, uh, dig up dirt on Slain clock, uh, and then that will um, that will get you your first tick on the terribly named uh, Slain's pain clock. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> It is what it is. Uh, <laughs> oh, we call it Slain Bane. Slain Bane. <laughs> um, <laughs> sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> I have a, one suggestion. Like, we don't have a regular, like, place to... S- like, we've got turf now, but, like, mm-hmm. we don't really yet have, like... We're still establishing ourselves as sellers in this area. We don't really have, like, regular street corners we sell on or whatever. Um, it might be good to um, look at getting more um, places or pe- groups or people that we can sell to or some like distributors like middleman or something yep yeah that's a good idea hmm. um, or I mean we could also do a show of force uh, against like the you know the bosses and um the people that we're kind of against and be like, hey, we're here now, guys. Ooh. So let's have a look at um, at picking a mission because this is actually the first time you as a crew have um, have chosen uh, a mission. The, the first true. one was just sort of like injected. Um, so uh, where is that in the... Um, in... 
uh, the score. So, um, because, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Brandon and Alex are the ones who haven't played Blaze before. Is that still true, Brandon? Like, are you have you played other games since, or...? No, I have not. Okay, cool, cool. Uh, no worries at all. So the the idea is that um, there's several mission types, uh, which you can see here. Um, and I've got the PDF up on the stream, by the way. Um, uh, so there's there's several mission types, um, and you you pick a mission and sort of a, a target and you fill in the detail and then we we like jump straight in um instead of like you know fumbling through the usual planning phase um but to get there we need to know sort of like what um what the real target of this is and um and then we can go from there and, and figure out what we want to do um so I tend to find that there are like two ways to to choose a new score. Either you know what your target is and then you want to figure out how to deal with that target, or alternately you know what kind of thing you want to do and then you choose a mission type and then we figure out who your target is based on um, basically what makes sense. Yeah, we, I mean, we might want to, like, chat a bit about, like, what our strategy is going to be. Like, you know, what is our, like, we obviously have a big picture, like, ideological goal. And we have some, like, small-scale goals, like, fuck with slain. But, like, yeah. mm. I, I guess thinking about the source material with, like, Peaky Blinders and, or, you know, the Russian Revolution or whatever, like, what is our actual game plan? Like, how do we get from point A to point B? Um who are our targets and how are we going to turn those into like victories and that kind of thing yeah. um how do we capitalize on what we are achieving and what we're going to achieve mm. Mm. and i think i think sabine would probably like bring up everyone around the like printing press which also functions as a table and like have this conversation because she's you know she's done military campaigns before mm. <laughs> she knows you need to have a plan mm -hmm. Oh, dear, I've got an indecisive cat. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Um, so, I think one of the things that, well, I think there are two immediate things that we will, like, constantly be concerned about, which is um, increasing sales territory and having particularly interesting things to say. And I think that because we've just started, we have no real like quality exposés of any kind to share yet um like we've been working on slain because all of us have like very strong reasons to believe that uh slain needs to go down but i think that there may be something smaller that we are still looking for not only because it's worth talking about but because if we don't talk about it our paper is still shit yeah fair enough do we have enough people here um and do we have the means to put out our broadsheet effectively or do we need more people do we um do we need more do we need like so yeah so at the moment um your your operation's pretty small right like you don't have many people um who are you don't actually really have hawkers themselves right you've got weavers kids um mm -hmm. who are acting as sort of runners for you and are smuggling in um your uh your printed goods into some of the workhouses around um Coleridge but as it stands you don't have like you don't actually have a street corner um like definitely don't have a shop front uh and you don't have any street corner like actual hawkers so 
that does mean that you're whilst you're growing like a little bit of a readership going on inside the um like the, the lower classes in Coleridge you're not getting a wider readership and you're not developing a customer base um so you're not going to be earning any money yet um we should start recruiting maybe we should do a socialized mission um go hit up bars and like you know um whatever places and start like getting our name out there a bit more and also like being like hey you, you should come work for us um, interesting um on one hand we are wanted um so where and when we choose to go and do these socialized missions is in, in itself a risk i think um but also thinking about who do we who do we appeal to that's in like the immediate area that is like relatively safe for us to be there and who may be interested mm. is there another faction that would have people in it that would be interested too potentially someone else in the immediate area as in like another crew um as in like you know there's organizations is that crew yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah um so there are the other factions many of those other factions are crews um like for instance in the uh in Coleridge, we've got the lost who are a group of street uh toughs and ex-soldiers dedicated to protecting the downtrodden and the hopeless um uh, they are definitely a crew but um yeah. the ink rakes are more of like an established faction um yeah yeah so the scovlanders yeah they're sort of uh, I mean, they're not like a faction. Yeah, they're it's like a... be like a, there'll, there'll be a, like a, I imagine like a local community that would yeah. essentially yeah. So they're kind of yeah. like a hybrid. Like they're like as a as a name for themselves and who they are as an identity. They're kind of a faction, but they kind of yes. assemble out more like a crew. Yeah. So the Scovlander refugees, uh, and then you've got the citizenry of Coleridge itself, um, and the the Scovs who live in Coleridge. Uh, who lived here even though they are technically like they are culturally scobs but they uh the ones who are like not actually refugees they're more considered like actual um citizenry of Coleridge instead of those like that refugee side of things um so and as you can see here from the factions of Duskwell uh sheet um the Scovlander refugees are actually higher tier than the citizenry of um of oh, Coleridge. Wow. So oh. there's more of them um and they're probably they're probably not better funded um because I don't think either of them are particularly well funded, but the Scovlander refugees would be bringing with them a lot more people, probably um a lot more goods that they're like fleeing um fleeing Scovland with. Mm. And I would dare say that there's probably a little bit of, um, a little bit of like in the same way uh, as uh, fleeing the collapse of um, Tsarist Russia, a lot of like money came with the the refugees. Uh, so so even though Coleridge has those those local scovs who have you know salt of the earth uh, so, sorry salt of the earth folks who have lived here a long time um the the wealthy came with the refugees so they would actually have um more money behind them yeah. in in a backing kind of way there's those like families that are like oh we were kings and queens back in the old country and now we have to keep all of our gold under the stairs yeah um, exactly they still have the gold right but yeah, yeah. but they're just can they've can they're considered to be like lesser sure. because they've like moved moved country i mean um, totally yeah. depends on who you ask <laughs> um yeah i i would read, um, sorry you go. Uh, i would dare say that the folk of coleridge would look not too kindly on them um and and vice versa as well there would be some um some traitorous like cultural tension going on there i think i think as as a, as a group they're kind of interesting um uh, because they've kind of like especially those are the, like the more wealthier ones have come from sort of like comfortable living to 
basically being treated kind of like second class almost mm. so they've got these like weird mix of like moral and ethical values that could probably pretty pretty easily be exploited by us yeah yeah well maybe then do we like do we want to basically try and hobnob with like a pa local power broker then who might be a skull or something like start establishing those kind of connections and things um i mean we might want to start with gathering information and stuff about it but like do we want to like yeah basically get on the good side of or get like the, the tacit approval of a local kind of power broker it's not a bad idea um because that I way we have, have to that's going to give us access to information and also gives us a bit more um footing yep i'm down to do anything social because i just spent my last advance on subterfuge because <laughs> i get i get um special armor against mm -hmm. um suspicion and persuasion <sighs> that's very good yeah yeah I think it'll be interesting to see Sabine with people they're more familiar with too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll um, be, I think that'll be pretty interesting as well. Mm -hmm. I've history with them. <laughs> yeah. And this is more coming coming back into your cultural background too. Mm. We've had the rest of us quite thoroughly explored, but you're still kind of the, the odd <laughs> of the group. So I kind of like this. I like this. <laughs> this could go. Um... Luke oh. is saying in chat that we are basically describing Ulf Ironborn in a nutshell. That's true. Uh, okay, is is he in this area? But also, isn't he just a big rowdy boy in a pub, like rather than like a upstanding pillar of the community? <laughs> That's what I've seen in a lot of Blades games, but in ours, uh, it could be different. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Maybe he is one of these. Maybe the Ironborns are like mm. a rich family from Scotland who, um, he's used to having power and mm. gets it by being, um, Full a thug. Mm. Yeah, totally. And he can, well, he, yeah. his personality could play out very, very interestingly here, mm. where he's kind of trying to wrestle back with that power that he doesn't currently have here. Mm. But he has it among some communities because they still recognize him as a figure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that'd be kind of interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, he is doing a lot with very little resources. Yeah. Yeah. And also, he has bruises, which would be useful for his down the line. Yes. That's um, do we, should we, like, I guess, do some investigations then into, like, what would be the best way to kind of touch bases with him other than just showing up because like that sure we could just show up and talk to him mm. but like yeah, it's gonna be really got a big party coming up or something you know like or maybe yeah. he's very particular about like how he gets approached i don't know yeah hmm. okay is that what uh what is that sort of the the angle folks want to want to pursue sounds good to me i like yeah that. i dig it I think it's really cool and something we haven't done yet. So. Yeah. Okay. Um, really so lucky. that's that does come to the question: Do you want to gather information beforehand, or um, do you want to jump straight into the score and like? Because um, we can say, you know, you 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 uh, we do a social um, uh, a social <laughs> score and uh, let's see, social score. Um, and the detail needed is the social connection, right? Like, yeah. so so we don't yet know anyone who knows Ulf mm. Ironborn, mm -hmm. but I'm sure that that's not too difficult to find out. Um, so... Okay, well, um, Anya wouldn't have any connections with him, right? I bet she knows a friend of a friend or something. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have a connection, possibly, actually. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you are one, my my deadly friend is Veleris, a spy who is, works for the Scotland Consulate. Mm. Oh, okay. Um, uh, and I like I would not be surprised if there is some kind of you know a very least an open line of communication with Wolf, if mm. not something more. Um, so I could follow that up. 
Yeah. Do we want to see that? Absolutely. Okay. How do you Watch get in? Uh, on my consort role. Sorry. How? No, it's fine. Uh, how do you get in contact with Velarus, uh generally? Um, um. Let's see. I feel like there's probably like a um. You like have to go to a certain bar and like order a particular drink <laughs> that doesn't actually exist, and then like a flag gets raised three buildings away and like <laughs> um and then like two nights later or like 73 hours later or something specific like yeah. that you know like, there's like a meeting is set up kind of thing i think that's really funny and great <laughs> okay okay um like all these like, obnoxious steps just <laughs> yeah um I think then, um, <laughs> because we, we already know that uh, Velarus is your your friend, right? Like, that's you, you have this contact. Uh, but I think then the the issue comes in, because uh, this is going to be a, a gather information check, um, mm -hmm. and to find out, like, how much, um, how much time and um, how much ability Velarus is going to have to... Yeah. Um, to talk to you here, mm -hmm. we have to see how well you go through the steps of like setting up this meet, right? Like, because <laughs> if you bungle this up, Velarus might be able to like pop over for, uh, you know, two seconds and be like, hey, you actually screwed up. I'm not talking to you again, right? Until you yeah. get it fucking correct. Or they can be like, yeah, we've, we've got the whole night set aside because mm -hmm. uh, no one has any idea that I could mm -hmm. possibly be here. In fact, someone who looks exactly like me is currently murdering someone so it's fine you know so you know it it can um uh, i think that that's like the hook that we, we're gonna yeah. um hang on here cool um yeah great because i mean like the thing is i could just walk into the consulate probably but like that would not be okay <laughs> yeah like i could and i could probably talk to someone who i wanted to talk to but also i shouldn't do that for many reasons yeah um, so I like, I, I like, yeah, I like your suggestion. It sounds cool. Um, so what is, is this a consort? I think or... so. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think this it is a consort. It's bad. It's um, great. I don't have any in consort. So... And it's a, <laughs> it's a, a fortune roll. Uh huh. So there's no, there's no risk of failure. Um, uh -huh. and... this is great. This will be very good. <laughs> this is um, great. um, I'm not going to push myself because it's funnier if I don't. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, oh. There's an option to actually, there's a fortune roll thing in the um, rolling thing now. That's cool. Yeah, mm. yeah. Let's have a look. Let's see how this goes. Uh, one. <laughs> I goofed. One. Okay, so it's it's limited success. Um, so, uh, sorry, limited effect. Mm -hmm. Um, which means that uh, on a on a um, a gather information, you can get um sort of not great information to be honest. Mm -hmm. Um. I will let you sort of ask one question from the gather information track uh, mm -hmm. properly, and then then we will frame a bit of a scene on um, on how this works. So I think that this is also involved in like uh, we probably see uh, Sabine mm -hmm. in some way asking this question right through through the um, the secret messages that you're leaving to to yeah. get in contact with Valorous, and that's why they they're like only able to answer your one thing because the rest was nonsense right and also arouse suspicion and yeah just poor form basically uh yeah not very professional uh <laughs> for uh for Velarus's tastes cool um okay let's see um so can i ask um like, if I ask, how can I find Wolf, is that just, like, here is the club that he hangs out in? Or is that, like, how can I get to him in an appropriate way? 
Yeah, I think that it would be would be closer to that. Like it, it it's it's going to be in some way useful information, right? Like yeah. not just not just where, but um, it will give you that that entry. Um, uh, yeah, I will. Um, well, actually, no. I'll ask you. How can I get um, Ulf to to like? How can I get Ulf on our side? Which is how can I get them to X? Okay. Um, what does Valorous look like? Have you ever met them in uh, like face to face? Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I feel like they probably like met um, and possibly even knew each other back in Scotland oh, um, previously. Uh, let's see, what does Valorous look like? Um, I think. Valorous looks really bland, like just plain. That's kind of like how they can get away with, um, you know, like you said, this one who looks exactly like me murdering someone right now, you know, there, there's like, you know, it, it was a fortunate coincidence that they took a career of like espionage, but um, they're just kind of like, they are the kind of person that people are like, yeah, it's like some Scotlander was coming through here. They've got the, um, uh like kind of um dusky dusky blonde hair um uh like n not like tough enough that they look like a soldier but you know maybe a laborer or something um uh nose has been broken a couple of times um uh yeah but dresses like probably quite nicely okay okay say, like exceptionally unremarkable yeah yeah I'm yeah. imagining like almost like their demeanor is all polite words mm. spoken very like tiredly and insincerely <laughs> so that they mm. just blend in with everyone else. Yeah, because okay. everyone's tired and everyone's having a bad time. Yep. All right. Um Okay, cool. I, I like it. So um, we see you get back through through the grapevine um, to to meet uh, in. There's like a, a small marble bench um, outside in uh, not in White Crown. Where would this be? Um, somewhere somewhere probably fancier than than you should be necessarily. Um, which is why like Valerus is like kind of cons like confused why you wanted to meet here but they're like oh, all right sure you you want to meet there let's do it um this sounds uh, maybe like six towers yeah it's probably in six towers um so uh i can i can show that on the map up here um oh wait it's it's right here uh so six towers is sort of in this area um it's an older area of the um, of the city, and it's I mean, you know, m much of the city is old because uh, it's pretty unchanging. But uh, let's let's see if I can get the um, the imagery for it up here for everyone because it's it's a particularly beautiful looking um, place, uh, at least in my opinion. Mm. Um, where is it? Silkshaw Six Towers. Um, so yeah so it's this sort of like old rundown part um and it it used to be um it used to be much more uh beloved than it is now but um it's still it's got it's the old sort of palatial charm of mm -hmm. um of a dusk wall that's sort of in the past um and there's this this huge chapel to uh, the Church of the Ecstasy of the Flesh, um, where outside there's a ring of, of marble benches, um, and there, this is sort of a few minutes after a service has gone, like, you were supposed to meet, you know, like, six minutes after final bell on, on XYZ, and, um, and sitting down, uh, there's, um, a, a, as you, as you, like, described a nondescript, um, young uh young man who's like 
you you would know this because you're a scov and and you you got here you know how uh the people of um of dusk will look at scovs right like you you know those glances and you know the the description of what they think a fine upstanding scov mm-hmm. looks like right um this this man couldn't fit that more to a t right like they've they've taken every possible opportunity they could to to blend in with what they're expected to look like uh and then in some ways to another scov they stick out like a sore thumb right like you 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 look at them and you go you know, that's <laughs> yeah all right yeah but um but it it gives them a kind of of cover you know, it, it also um, brings them some unwanted attention in some ways, but they use that to their advantage. Yeah, um, yeah. They, they open up a, um, a little um, dented tin case, um, take out a cigarette and, and like, pat it down on, on, the, um, uh, on the inside of the case and put it in their mouth um, and uh, strike, a, uh, strike a match, put it up, and as you you walk over and like sit down on the um, on the bench, whilst they're they're like they've timed it perfectly. Whilst they're they're lighting um, the cigarette out of the corner of their mouth, um, they say, um, "You've got a minute, Sabine. What is it?" Okay, a minute. That's enough. So. We, me and my crew, are getting set up down in um, Coleridge. Uh, we're new to the area, though. I know there's a lot of people like us around the place, um, but we don't know the lay of the land, who the power players are. People have been talking about some guy named Wolf. I need to know how we can get an in with him. Well, and she, like, starts rolling her own cigarette. Yeah. Also, like, it's such a contrast. She's, like, got a slouch. She's, like, wearing yeah. nice shitty clothes. And you're definitely getting looks, right? Like, oh, yeah. there are people walking past who are in, like, lace that's got holes in it and things like that and, and hats that have too much dust on the brim because they've been up in an attic for too long and yeah. um, very much old money that doesn't have much money left. Um, and they're, like, you know, they're, they're casting looks at you. And um, uh, Valorous, like looks up and and flashes them a smile and then they they see that and then like turn away and and keep walking um and uh they take a drag and then say well for starters i wouldn't recommend getting into bed with ulf (laughs) but if you need someone to show you the ropes and to get you started in Coleridge, I could think of worse people. <sighs> we don't need to make any deals with the devil, but it's nice to have someone on our side. And and they, they sort of laugh at that and, and don't like fill in their side of the joke there. Um and uh and they say Ulf hangs out at a bar called the Black Tree. Up the back, he's got a private room. I don't think he paid for it, if you understand what I mean. He's... He's the worst of our kind, Sabine. One who doesn't give a shit? No. He cares about the wrong sort of things. When the war, you know what, I don't have time for this. The Black Tree, ask for him by name. If you go in underhanded, if you attempt to beat around the bush, he will not appreciate it. Ask by name, order him a drink, and watch yourselves, all right? will do i appreciate the time and like sort of without um without like you know dropping stride or anything uh they get up and uh and like gather up their coat 
um, mm-hmm. and and flick ash out of uh, the cigarette um, and mumble like the whole way. Like there's just this like this mm-hmm. one mumble that goes up in the in the full movement. Um, and they say, um, "Get the sequence right next time," and huh? then like you know, tip the the ash off the end of the cigarette and then disappear into uh, into the gathering of the crowd. Um, and uh, like a few seconds after they're gone, we we see like just the shot from like sitting at Sabine uh, with um, with her cigarette, and uh, we see a baton like tap Sabine on the Uh-oh. shoulder, uh, and the camera pulls back, and there's like a, a blue coat there, like you know, hurrying you along kind of thing. <laughs> um, so. What's the next scene? Do we want to do we jump straight to the black tree uh, into the score? I would like it to be noted that like Savine absolutely stubs out a cigarette on the baton before getting oh. up. <laughs> <laughs> so just and then gets up. Yeah, all right. Um, Sabine probably has to run out of, out of six towers. Fine, worth it. Um, so we're we're going for a social plan. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, I guess it is. Um, okay, marvelous. and the detail is is that connection. You've you've got um, you've got the the in. Mm-hmm. Um, so now uh, you need to choose your loadouts. Uh, so each character um, chooses their character's load, uh, which indicates how much stuff they're carrying on the operation. Uh, they you don't actually have to like s- select each individual item; just the maximum amount of items you're allowed to uh, have access during the session or during the score. Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, for example, S- Sabine, if you took like light, you would have access to three of your items. Uh, the items that are in italics are free slots. Um, so everyone choose, uh, choose them. And, um, uh, and then when, when you know, shout out what your, your load's going to be. Uh, the heavier you go, obviously, the more you look like you're here for a job. Um, but the black tree is kind of like a bit of a... Uh, it's a bit of a rough bar, but it's not like... This isn't a, a place where, you know, like... This isn't a, a water deep, an adventurer's bar, right? Like, if you go in covered in guns, people are gonna, you know, pull out their own guns from underneath the counter and, and ask you to leave, but yeah... Um, this town's only big enough for one of us. Yeah, exactly, right? Uh, I'm just going to take a light load, because, like, I'll fight people if I need to, but that's not the plan going into it. And so I got told to go in with no guile, so... Okay. And besides, I can fight people with my bare fists. That's true. That's true. Um... Hmm. How's everyone else going in? Parker is rigging. No, you don't. No. Kind of interesting chain situation because I've lost like probably my most vital source of like if things fuck up, I have my backup powers, and I don't really have that right now. Um, hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, you still can attempt. Um, you still can attempt to attune to things. You oh, just yeah. remember the ill feeling that uh, that. Yeah. That you prophesied uh, would happen, so you know. Not really feeling, yeah, too too keen on doing that. Unless yeah, a life threatening. Um, Kane doesn't really like apart from supernatural supplies. Kane doesn't really carry anything else that would be rather relevant to going into a bar. Um, so, I mean, apart from just their like general tiny kit, which has their like mm. silver and spirits bottles and things like that, Kane is pretty much just open that. Okay. Uh, how about you, Stavril? I'm going to go in normal. Um, I am going to carry... I think I'm going to carry, like, a fake pile of, like, board games that are actually hollowed okay. out in the center to carry all of my gear in. Hmm. But I am just perpetually carrying that that pile everywhere. Okay, so I that's like That's why it. my load is normal. 
Cool. All right. And uh, how about you, Seneca? Well, Nyrix. Um, I know I'm going light. Um, I'm inclined to say I. Hmm. Idly, can can someone describe uh, what the place that we're headed towards looks like? Sure. Yeah. So um, it's a uh, it's. A bit of a seedy place, but it looks like, um, oh, how would you describe it? It's, it looks like the kind of place where it was once a cabaret, uh, like, you know, in, in our time, like a jazz club kind of thing, but whatever it was at first, uh, didn't, didn't pan out. So that was sold on to someone else. So it's still like done out with the, the trappings of, of this cabaret, um, almost like circus tent interior but has been changed into a lot more of like a traditional irish pub uh right in the middle of the thing um sort of which everything is built around is this massive gnarled burnt black tree uh which has been carved into like a supporting pillar for the whole thing so it's this big like sort of torus shaped um uh bar um and there's back rooms, um, and uh, there's there would be a stage and an area where people can play, but it's now like not used. Um, I mean, you, you can just go, you can just set your load. You don't have to determine your um, your items uh, for now. Okay. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so, I think we will roll. Uh, our engagement and then we will we will go on break mm -hmm. sounds good so the engagement role um so this is a fortune role um that starts with one die who wants to to keep track of this and to make the engagement role lavender's got it beautiful okay so you've got one die for good luck um and uh, then we go through the major advantages and disadvantages going on here. <clears throat> so, is this operation particularly bold or daring? Um, the the operation is is essentially meet with Ulf Ironborn and convince them to uh, convince them to what? What's what? What is your intent here? What do you want Ulf Ironborn to do after this? Um. Give us information, a heads up about the shit that's going down. Um, like, not be our ally, but necessarily, but like, be aware of us and give us tacit permission to operate the, yeah. in the area. Sorry, you, also, you know something on that? I was oh. going to say, in, in kind of, um, I lost track of my thought, um, in kind of a way, almost kind of convince him that if he's got beef with someone and it kind of aligns with our values, that we're here to yeah. help exploit that. Okay, so you're you're going in and, and not necessarily making an alliance with Ulf, but um, going into like uh, we want to be neighbors. Yeah, you want to be neighbors, right? You want to be neighborly. Um, we want to be the kind of neighbors who, if you run out of sugar, you go next door and like you know, like, hey, buddy, can I get some sugar? Except the sugar is Seneca, probably. <laughs> Fair. Um, all right. <laughs> um, cool. So, uh, is it particularly bold or daring? Not so much. Um, uh, is it overly complex or contingent on many factors? No, not at all. It's contingent on one. Ulf exists. <laughs> um, does the plan's detail expose a vulnerability of the target or hit them where they're weakest? Um, it's vulnerable to us, but I don't necessarily think to him. Yeah, no, it, it, probably the opposite. Um, yeah. Is the target strongest against this approach? Uh, yeah, I mean, Ulf's got, Ulf's got his shit together in this place. Like, this is this is his place now. Um, so, minus one die, uh, so we're on zero. Um, can any of your friends or contacts provide aid or insight for this operation? Well, one of them did. Right, so you've got a plus one die because uh, Valaris <laughs> did. Um, 
Uh, are any enemies or rivals interfering in the operation? Are we, are you, are we, is it the coin? Is it Red, Red Weather? Well, I need to find out who Ulf hates. Um, I, so... I, Lavender, what are you... What's happening? One die. Where are one die? Yeah. One oh, we have a die. 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 <laughs> die. Yeah, yeah. We took the die away, then we put it back, but we're still at one. Oh, uh, <laughs> factions. Um... Let's see. Ulf Ironborn. The very idea that you didn't know what was going on broke me completely. <laughs> 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 All right. Am I meant to be giving you coins? <laughs> um, okay, so no. Uh, Ulf, uh, none of your enemies or rivals are inf interfering with the operation uh, at the moment. Uh, are there any other elements that you want to consider? Um, maybe a lower tier target uh, will give you plus one D. Higher tier target will um, give you negative D. I, I think that we'll keep it at one. Um, can I make a case for getting a bonus dice? Yeah. Which is, we have the good stuff. And so some of Wolf's guys are going to be hooked on our stuff. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's facts. That is facts. It is, it is mechanical facts. I'm not allowed to say that it is wrong. Um, <laughs> but there might only be a few of them, because it says you get to tell us one, a few, or many, or and how many. Like, maybe it's just mm -hmm. one dude. Like and Ulf, even if somebody's guys are into it, that doesn't mean Ulf likes it. But yeah. it's possibly a good thing. I just wanted to put it out there at least. I am going to make a fortune roll to see how many. And because of the thing that I just learned, it's going to be a fortune roll with zero dice. Um, and let's let's see. <laughs> okay. Um, so so there's one member. Um, okay. There's one member of the um, of of Ulf's thugs. Who, who has read, and like, we'll, we'll see them. We'll see them in a moment. Um, uh -huh. uh, but not, probably not enough to get us a bonus dice on our engagement. No, I don't think so, okay. no. Um, uh, but I did see, I did see uh, Luke's comment there. Uh, plus one D f for an advantage. Ulf is probably both drunk and overconfident here. Mm, true. Yeah. Also, yeah. Um, is socialize our preferred mission? It is. Yes. Does that give us a bonus? Oh, that's the one, is it? Uh, no, no, no. Does that give a bonus, Lavender? Is that how it works? Um, I think it gives you a bonus die when you are gathering information for the score. Uh, okay. Right. Oh, wait. Which we right? Yeah, we should have done. That's fine. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Oh, yep. well, we know for next time. Um. So, um, okay, okay. So I will give an extra bonus die for that then. Um, okay. And so we've got, <laughs> you're just, you're ready, Lavender. I love it. All right. Okay. I love, I am here with the visual representations. <laughs> so let's, let's see that, uh, that engagement roll. Two die. Perfect. I have to attune my dice through roll 20. They're coming through. No They're going through the quantum <laughs> dice roller. Oh, they got stuck. <laughs> this is like a reality show where you're like, I need to find what? out. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. First we will, bam. We will find out that dice what that means uh, in when we get back from the break um we will we'll be back at uh let's say let's say 10 past 9 a uh, aest so that's like seven minutes from now um and or six minutes oh it just ticked over um mm -hmm. and uh yeah it will we'll, we'll be back then and we can continue on this ridiculous, uh, this ridiculous score. I'm already excited to see what happens. Uh, and whilst you're away, enjoy Lavender's beautiful break music. See you in a bit.